For as long as cyber criminals have been cooking up malicious software to do stuff like steal your precious data, the security industry has been thinking up creative names for their little schemes. Trojans, worms, ransomware, you get the idea. But one of the most sinister forms of malware prevalent today is the dreaded rootkit. And although to the layman, this sounds like some kind of dental procedure, an actual rootkit on your PC can be far more unpleasant. But then what exactly are they, and why can they be even more problematic than other types of computer infections? Great question. Like with a lot of the other threats to your system, the name Rootkit reveals a lot. It's derived from the concept of root access in the operating system Unix, which allows a user broad permissions to change files and settings. And while the means by which different rootkits access to uh, usually off-limits parts of the computer differ, <laughs> All rootkits serve the same general function, to conceal either their own presence or the presence of another piece of malware so that it can carry out its nefarious deeds on your system without you ever knowing. And it's because of this concealing behavior that rootkits are often very difficult to remove, as many users in the mid-2000s found out when they realized Sony had shipped a metric butt-ton of music CDs with rootkits designed for, you guessed it, copy protection. These rootkits hid the DRM software which limited what users could do with their optical drives and also caused serious system slowdowns and introduced a ton of security flaws that other malware creators were able to take advantage of. And then when Sony finally released a removal tool after news of the rootkit went viral, all it did was cause even more issues. So how do rootkits hide themselves anyway? While some rootkits just inject themselves into your programs, somewhat like traditional computer viruses, the more dangerous forms run as part of your operating system's kernel. No, not the chicken guy. But the core part of your OS that allows your programs to communicate with your hardware through things like device drivers. Since drivers usually run in kernel mode, many rootkits disguise themselves as drivers, which is why you should only download drivers from trusted sources like the manufacturer's website, no matter how badly you want to get your fancy new graphics card working. What makes kernel mode rootkits so insidious is that they essentially up appear to be a part of the OS itself, meaning you can't really trust your antivirus program to detect it or anything else your system says about itself for that matter. And as if that weren't bad enough, other kinds of rootkits even go beyond infecting your OS kernel by doing things like contaminating your hard drive's boot sector, often done to break encryption, or getting into your system's firmware, such as your motherboard or GPU BIOS. If that happens, not even completely reformatting your PC will help. Well, Linus, that all sounds pretty darn awful. Um, if I don't even know I have a rootkit, how can I get rid of them? That, admittedly, is a challenge. Larger organizations have tried strategies like logging suspicious access requests through a firewall or dumping everything in a system's memory to look for malicious code, but these aren't the kinds of things a home user can easily do. Modern motherboards with UEFI BIOSes have some features to block rootkits, such as secure boot, but this solution has been criticized for keeping a user from doing legitimate things like installing multiple operating systems. So while some simpler rootkits can be detected and removed by your favorite anti-malware program, the best counter strategy is to just be super careful about what you download. Speaking of things to be downloaded, why don't you download some knowledge to your brain? Little Bits lets everyone use electronics as modular building blocks. Their modules snap together with magnets so you can create circuits in seconds. It's perfect for kids, parents, big kids, Yo, coders, hardware hackers, makers, artists, designers, engineers, and students and with little bits. You can even get your dog to like send text messages or make a robotic snack server. So why buy electronic toys and gadgets when you can literally invent them? The modules range from very simple, you know, power sensors, LEDs, to very complex with wireless and programmable modules. And there's over 60 modules that can be used in a vast number of creative combinations. And better yet, little bits is offering new customers 
customers 20 bucks off their first kit and free shipping anywhere in the continental US. All you gotta do is go to littlebits.com slash techquickie. That's littlebits.com slash techquickie. I don't know why that's in there twice. And uh, go ahead and uh, get 20 bucks off, woo! After you make something, actually send me an Instagram or better yet, tag me on Twitter because I'm more likely to check that. I would love to see it. So thanks for watching, guys. If you liked the video, do that thing. If you disliked it, do the other thing. Uh, check out our other channels. We've got a great video on Channel Super Fun right now. It's like part two of the Nerf battle. Uh, the fire department shows up, so definitely not gonna wanna miss that. And uh, also leave a comment under the video if you have suggestions for future fast as possible. And don't forget to subscribe and follow and all that good stuff. See you next time.